Holly Booth, but for this class, it is Cooking with Chef Dawn. So today, um, we are going to be cooking a Thai-inspired, uh, well, from Thai Kitchen, uh, their uh, recipe for Thai green curry chicken. So first things first, to get started, um, I wanted to have anybody who is joining just use the little um, hand icon to just kind of kind of wave and basically like, hey, I'm here. And uh, that way I know who is actually on uh, with us. And I'm gonna pull up this live event here so that I can make sure that I can see everybody's comments for whenever they, they have something. So uh, to get started, first things first, uh, safety in the kitchen. Uh, we always wanna make sure that if we have longer hair, that our hair is back. So I'm going to leave you for just one second while I go to the restroom because you don't wanna um, do your hair <laughs> in the kitchen. So I'm gonna go to the, uh, to the restroom, put my hair up, and then we're gonna go directly to washing our hands before you do anything. All of that has to be done first. So give me one second, I'll be right back with you. Okay. So now my hair is pulled back. Now I'm getting ready to go wash my hands. Uh, there is a good rule of thumb when you're washing your hands. If you count, uh, not, not count, but if you actually say the alphabet um, all the way through to the end, that's a good 20 seconds. So that makes sure that your hands are nice and clean. You wanna make sure that you're doing this and going around your wrists and everything and going through your fingers, making sure that you're scrubbing really, really well. We wanna make sure that your hands are super clean. Um, I'm gonna be washing my hands, but I'm also gonna be wearing some gloves for, for this episode, okay? Right. You want to get your paper towel, I'm going to turn that water off and then you're going to dry your hands with a different paper towel and toss it into the garbage can. So. Okay, who's joined? I'll be right back. Get some gloves. All right. So, the green curry chicken, um, the rice is gonna take the longest. So what we are wanting to do first is actually, um, uh, getting the rice started. Uh, for those of you that do not have a rice maker, um, we will get the rice started in a pan. So I did bring the pan out and we are going to do one cup of rice to one and a half cups of water and one tablespoon of butter. Okay. And we will mix that all up into this pan here. I'm gonna kind of tilt you guys down just a little bit so you guys can see. Okay. So, this is the pan. It's about a two and a half quart pan. Uh, we're going to put in our water, which is a one and a half cup of liquid. So this is the liquid measuring cup, like we had discussed earlier in the week. We are going to take one cup of rice. Make sure that when you're doing your rice that over top of another container, like I used, I used this particular bowl, um, that you're going back and forth with the flat side. This is the flat side of the butter knife. And you want it level, just like this. And you're going to go back and forth, back and forth until you get a nice level cup of rice. Now you'll notice that this is a completely different um, type of measuring cup. This is for dry ingredients. So this is for liquid ingredients, dry ingredients. So we're gonna take this rice and we're going to put that rice in there. We're gonna set this to the side, okay? Um, I'm gonna grab my wooden spoon 
and I'm going to turn the heat on to a medium high, okay? And we're gonna have one tablespoon of butter. You can use any butter that you want. This is salted organic butter. We're just gonna put that right in there. We're gonna get this to a boil. Hi, Susan, thank you for joining us. And please, if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to, to ask. That's what the whole purpose of this episode is, or this class, is to kind of go and uh, we're cooking together so that if you do have any uh, questions, that they can be answered um, at that time. So anyway, so we're just gonna kind of stir this up a little bit, get that butter melted. When this starts to boil, we're going to put the cover on it. So you're gonna need this pan with a tight cover. Um, and also just real quick, uh, you notice that this is nice and, and murky. Some people will rinse their rice. I do not rinse my rice. Um, white rice, I will rinse. What, what, white rice can tend to be a little bit um, dirtier, but I mean, I don't, I don't really rinse my rice. And so, but it's your preference. You can rinse it or not rinse it. And this is the organic jasmine rice that I am using. You don't have to use the organic jasmine rice. You can use white rice if you choose. Um, I happen to like the jasmine with this dish. It's very nice. Okay. Once this gets up to a boil, we'll cover this and then we'll head on to the other stuff. Anybody have any questions so far? Who's on right now? Go ahead and use the hand emoji uh, to let me know who, who's actually on watching the show. Anybody on? I see four people viewing, I just don't see your names. Can you say hello or use the hand emoji so that I know that you're watching? Okay, so this is getting nice, melted in there. I can already see that it's starting to, starting to steam, so we're getting closer. <laughs> it's okay, Susan, you can just say, anybody can just say hi, so I know that you're watching. Just say hello, nice to see you. This recipe is also really good if you have children or grandchildren uh, that are in your home because um, they can start measuring out everything for you and they really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun for them in the kitchen. So um, it's definitely something that's nice to, to make it a little bit of a family function. Okay. So as you can see, we're starting to get a boil. Well, I have this little little plat platter here or plate here that I put my utensils on. So you can use a, a dish or you can use a um, uh, a napkin, whatever it is that, that you have. So, okay. So this is going nicely. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cover this and let it get to a rapid, more rapid boil. And then I'm going to, um, turn it down to a simmer, okay? And we're gonna let that simmer for 15 minutes and then what we're gonna do once 15 minutes is up, then we're gonna like completely take it off the heat and we're gonna let it finish steaming. But don't don't lift this lid. So this lid is, is key. Um, also, I kinda wanna show you another little safety um, thing here. Uh, a lot of people have their handles out this way you're, uh, to be safe, uh, put your handles out over to the side uh, and not, not this way. Because if this is going on, now you're getting heat from, the, from the, um, the eye of the stove and this is gonna heat up this handle. So in order to be really safe, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down now. Uh, to be real safe, you're gonna wanna have the handle this way. This does two things, actually. Um, it's actually too hot. Let me turn it down a bit. Get my all right. Get that 
down. Okay, so this does two things. Um, one, it will help keep the handle from um, going over. I don't know why that's still doing that. Uh, it'll keep the handle from, um, from getting hot. The other thing is that if it's like this and you have small children here, uh, they easily can grab this handle and then all of a sudden an accident will happen with the child. Uh, it'll actually, you know, topple over on the child and the child will get burned. Um, so we want to make sure that that is not the case here. So, all right. So now that we have this wild rice, it's not wild rice, it's jasmine. Now we got that under control. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. Just lift the pot. It'll get it off the heat. So, but um, anyway, um, I like to make a little bit of a stir here. And now this is under control. So next we're gonna come over here. Okay, I'm gonna move you guys over here. I'm gonna move this pan. Now, get these ingredients out of the way because we're going to be cooking the chicken next. So chicken, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this pan set up here um, because we're getting ready to cook the chicken. So here um, for this pan, I don't know if you guys can see this pan. Can you see this pan? Okay, now I see the pan. All right, here we're just going to do a little swirl of the oil in there. This is the olive oil. And I use regular olive oil primarily because um, uh, if you use an extra virgin olive oil, it doesn't have the same... Uh, a heat is uh, like you can't cook with the extra virgin olive oil because it'll burn. So this has a, a better um, temperature. All right, so then the butter. So I use a little bit of butter. And we'll leave that there because we're getting ready to um, cut our chicken up and season it. Okay. And again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. I usually do this in person. So this is my first time doing this online. So, all right. So, chicken. I'm gonna get all of my other components out of the way because we are dealing with chicken right now. All right, so the chicken. These are the boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And as you can see, they're already seasoned. Um, I've, pre I've already packaged up my meats. Uh, I vacuum seal them, I put them in the freezer. It's a good way of, um, of buying in bulk and basically sorting out your meals. Um, it helps, especially because if you buy in bulk, it's gonna be a lot cheaper. And then you have a nice menu for each week and you can actually do this a month at a time. Um, uh, or you can do it a, a week at a time or a couple weeks at a time, whatever the case may be. Uh, buying in bulk, you can separate everything um, as I do here. So with that being said, um, these are the boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and I basically just cut them up in cubes. I start with, um, with long pieces. And then I just cut them in more of a bite-sized piece. Then I throw them into the pan or in the bowl. If I see too much fat on one of them, I'll either, if I'm able to get the fat off of it, I will. Um, if not, then I'll just, I'll just toss, the, toss it. Um, I don't want too much fat into this, this dish.
I have any questions so far, anybody? It's pretty, pretty simple and basic. I, um, unless your children are older and they have a little bit of, uh, and you trust them with a the knife, I, I wouldn't let them do this part, but all the other stuff that they can do and they, they love it. Okay. And once I'm down to my last couple, I will actually um, uh, make sure your hands are clean, okay? Um, usually the one holding the knife is, is clean. Make sure you turn your heat on to probably about a medium, just slightly over medium, just maybe like a medium high, because you want to get this, um, you want to get this oil and, and butter over here nice and hot, um, which it usually takes about two minutes to heat your pan. If you throw your chicken, fish or anything into a pan with oil and it's not at its temperature, uh, you're gonna, your, your meat is actually going to um, absorb that oil and it's gonna be gross. So make sure your oil is to temperature before you put your meat or anything for that matter into a pan with oil. So usually it takes about a minute and a half, two minutes, depending on your stove. Everybody's stoves are different. Uh, same thing with everybody's ovens. The ovens are different. Um, they all run, some of them run hot, some of them run low, um, and some of them are supposedly true to temperature. But I know with mine, like if something says to put my oven on 400, I'm, I'm putting mine either on 350 or 375 because mine tends to, tends to run hot. So... Also, your, um, your cutting boards should be um, basically assigned to meats or vegetables. You really shouldn't be using a cutting board for meats and vegetables. So uh, wooden cutting boards, I don't recommend for meats at all. Um, I just don't trust them. Um, I would save my, my cutting boards for cheeses and and even then, I still kind of get a little leery with cheese, but um, I'd save it for um, fruits and vegetables. So, so now I'm going to take this over here after I take my glove off. Get some new. Take this and go wash this off. You will see that you are going to be washing your hands a lot. So basically, even though I wore gloves, I still want to make sure that my hands are nice and clean. Um, if you don't wear gloves, you you know you definitely need to wash your hands a, a ton, just because you don't want to do have any cross contamination. So get this out of the way. Should be nice and hot and the reason why i add a little bit of oil to the butter is so that the butter the butter will still burn but it's not going to burn as fast as um as if you had just butter in there so i'm going to take this i'm going to swirl this around just a little make sure that that stand is doing good okay 
Look at our rice, you guys. Oops, I don't know where I'm pointing you at. <laughs> so there's our rice. See, as you can see, it's already getting nice and fluffy. Pretty excited about that. So, okay, get my other spoon. So this should be nice and hot. Um, when I put this into the pan, it should um, it should sizzle. Yeah. I'm gonna put this aside. All right. So if you have one cutting board, um, you're uh, and you have to do meats and vegetables, just make sure that um, when you're doing your uh, your uh, do your vegetables first. And then you can do your meats as long as you don't have anything left to cut. And then just make sure that you wash your, um, your cutting board really well with nice hot soapy water. Um, if you have a, a resin cutting board, um, those usually tend to, to clean better in my own opinion. So... Um, I put my resin cutting boards in the dishwasher because I know the dishwasher gets hotter than what I can um, withstand it. So, but if you do have only one cutting board, definitely do your vegetables first and then do your meats and keep them separated so that there's no cross contamination. Okay. Yes, you can use uh, the cutting boards for either if you if you use it into the um, I mean if you have it in high heat and get them get it really well sanitized. So no worries. Anybody else have any questions so far? So we're just gonna. Uh, keep cooking this until it's nice and brown. Now, um, this will be cooked all the way through, but um, keep in mind too that there's, we're gonna be making a sauce after this. So this will be also in a sauce and it will simmer for about 10 minutes also. So, but you wanna make sure these are really nice and brown. because I don't want to get my meat with my rice spoon. All right. So while that's doing its thing, um, I'm going to grab another, I'm going to grab a plate because I'm going to put the chicken on this plate when this is done cooking because then we're going to use this for the sauce. So and just to let you know what is actually on as far as seasoning on this chicken, because uh, I, I, I know that my, my chicken was seasoned. It's actually a Cajun seasoning because we like our, our food a little spicy. Um, if you don't like spicy, then don't use a Cajun seasoning. What we do recommend though is that you season your chicken with a little bit of salt and pepper, some garlic granules and onion granules, okay? All right, so now that our timer is off for our rice, so we're gonna turn this completely off and put the rice over into the back where there is no heat, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Susan, I love the fluffy rice too. 
As you can see, this is getting nice and brown, looking really good. And for a little added spice, I'm going to go ahead and put some crushed red pepper flakes. Now with this, you only need a pinch. And what I recommend with these red pepper flakes is that you crush them with your fingers. So as you're putting them in, you give them a little bit of a pinch like that, and that will release the oils out of the pepper flakes. You want to make sure that the chicken gets to about 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, when you are cooking, you can get yourself one of these little thermometers. And what I just recommend is that you go find a, a big fat piece. And then what you'll do is you'll just kind of put the thermometer into that big fat piece. Be careful of the steam. You don't want to hurt yourself. But this will allow you to see where your chicken is. And this already looks like it's still going to need some more uh, cook time. So we'll just put that out. There we'll and I'm loving the brown. Look at it browning. It's looking really good. Go ahead and wash this. Okay. Put that down here. Okay. Well, that's doing that. I'm going to go ahead and open my green curry paste. Now, mm, this stuff smells so good. Anyway, so this is the Thai green curry paste. Like I said, this is not the traditional or authentic way of cooking curry. Um, so, but this is a beautiful uh, green curry paste. Uh, this says authentic, but it is what it is. But look at that, it's very pretty. It's beautiful in color. Uh, when you mix this with the coconut oil, not coconut oil, but the coconut milk, uh, it makes for a very beautiful color. Um, ours is going to be a little bit different because I have the Cajun seasoning in it. So it's going to be kind of like a little bit of an orange color um, because I actually use all of the renderings in the pan. That's kind of key for me. So I don't want to lose all that flavor. So I just, when I empty out the chicken onto a plate and actually start cooking the sauce, I just use all of the renderings. I use the same pan just to keep the flavor going. Um, and, it, and it makes out for such a delicious, really rich, uh, yummy flavor. And so, um, but because of the, of, of the cayenne and the paprika and stuff like that, it will tinge this a, a, an orange, even though it's supposed to be green green chicken. And so, but, so we'll get this started. Let me go ahead and... Big piece here and test this to see where we are. Believe it or not, it still needs a little cooking. So, okay. But you see how beautiful this is turning out? It's nice and golden brown. 
beautiful. This is what you call brown. For those of you who don't know. And I do stir my meats a lot only because I want to get them nice and evenly brown and coated. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, paste ready. You'll need a tablespoon of the paste. Um, the, these jars are a little small. I like to mix it around a little bit. Um, just make sure that it's not all settled. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started. So you'll just kind of take that. Now I am a little bit liberal with the, um, with the green curry paste. I don't mind it at all. I, I absolutely love it. I actually will use more than it calls for. It'll say a, a tablespoon, but I'll do a heaping tablespoon. I don't actually like, uh, um, I don't actually level off this particular stuff. All right, this to me, I believe is gonna be done. I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium. where we are. We are definitely there. So we are past 165, so perfect. Now I'm going to take this mixture here and I'm going to put it on this plate. Very carefully. grab my towel because I have stuff that's on my pan. Now be careful, adults only do this, no children. Just kind of wipe that pan off, to make sure that you don't get any oils on your stove. And we will put this to the side. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our coconut milk. So I like this particular coconut milk. Um, you'll have your two little holes on the top um, so that it pours. Or you can just take the entire top off if you don't have a can opener. I'm gonna pour that in there. I'm gonna turn that down a little more. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our curry paste. I'm gonna rinse and actually wash my tablespoon because we're going to need that tablespoon for other items, other ingredients. Dry this off. Now I'm going to put this to the side. We're going to take the whisk and we're actually just going to whisk this through. And you'll let this kind of cook, uh, get it up to a little bit of a boil. You don't really want it to be a rapid boil because you don't want to take the chance of burning the coconut milk. Um, but you do want to get it to a little simmer. Uh, we're going to let this cook for about five minutes. So put that onto your timer. Make sure that's good and stir it up in there. And you can put this to the side. How are we doing so far? Everybody like in the class so far? You guys learning anything? <laughs> so when you're done with this, by the way, this has to go into the refrigerator. So if you don't put this in the refrigerator, you it, it'll spoil. So make sure to put this in the, in the refrigerator. It lasts for a good long time. Um, so uh, it, you know, um, I, I've used this several times. Well, not this particular one, I just opened it, but um, I can use this for several dishes. So it's, it's awesome, I love it. And again,
again, um, this is not spicy, even though it says that the curry paste is hot, it is not. Um, that's why I've added the uh, red pepper flakes and I've added the Cajun seasoning, just because we like a little bit of heat with our food. If you are not a spicy type of person, you do not need to add Cajun red pepper flakes or any of those types of um, spices to it. Just use your regular salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of um, garlic uh, granules, and a little bit of onion granules. So as you can see, it's just a very light um, uh, boil. It's not rapid or heavy. So you just want to kind of keep that like that. Uh, you want to kind of st keep stirring it a little bit only because you don't want it to kind of settle um, onto the bottom of the pan. So the next ingredient, um, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do the um, brown sugar. So you'll do two tablespoons of the brown sugar. The brown sugar um, I put in first because it's we're still using the tablespoon. So I want to make sure that I do the brown sugar first and then do the fish, um, the, the fish um, sauce. So um, that way I'm not uh, going reverse and I'm not um, contaminating anything or, or taking the chance of, of uh, cross-contamination. Um, and again, I'm going to reiterate that fish sauce is really potent. So even though it usually calls for two of the uh, tablespoons of fish sauce, we only use one. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and get the brown sugar. Now the recipe instructions when I when I originally had it, um, it said to have the the chicken in there and then put the uh, sugar and then the fish sauce. Um, I like to make the sauce first before before putting the chicken in there. I'm not quite sure why it makes a difference, but in my own world it makes a difference so uh, i'm going to go ahead and put this in here okay make sure that it's leveled off on the sugar you, again flat side down and make a nice little flat level surface okay put that in there and then what I like to do is I store my brown sugar in a Ziploc. It tends to keep it a lot better. And I use the freezer bags. Um, it just seems like it works better than the regular storage bags. Okay. Then we're going to stir the sugar around in there. Whisk that on. And right now, I can tell you guys right now, this smells so good. I, I can't wait to, to eat it. <laughs> All right, now that's in there. Now for the fish sauce. So I usually nice, nice shake up. And make sure that's in there. Now we're just gonna Put that in there. And now I'm for the most part done with my tablespoon. Okay. Yeah, I kind of think that it mixes better um, whenever you make the sauce first and then add the chicken. So, but you know, when you're, when you're dealing with other people's recipes, you know, you, I like to try to make it the way that they do it first. And then I, you know, then the next time I can say, okay, well, let me see if I can tweak it just a little bit, you know, because sometimes they come out really amazing. And then sometimes you're like, mm, if I would have added this, it probably would have made it better, you know? So recipes are kind of like your ground, uh, Excuse me one second. Um, recipes are kind of like a, a nice little starting point and then you just kind of make it your own. Everybody's tastes are different. So um, something that I might like, you might not like. 
um, and vice versa. So um, our taste buds are all different. I'm just gonna let this thicken up and as you notice, it is thickening up quite a bit. It's looking like a nice, beautiful uh, coconut sauce. And I like to let that fish, um, fish sauce kind of cook out a little bit. Um, like I said, it is a potent sauce, so I can't stress that enough to you. And I guess that's probably why I, I do it this way is because I, when I made it the way that they had it the be, uh, before, where you had the chicken in there, I felt like maybe the fish sauce might have hit the chicken and I, I wasn't fond of it. <laughs> so, so I felt like if we just mix this first and then add the chicken, um, that, that could be um, better. And it was, it was, it was a lot better. So we'll just let this kind of do its thing. Now for our rice, our rice is for the most part done. So we will make sure that we fluff this up. Look at that, it is beautiful. Nice and fluffy. So again, you don't have to have a rice maker to make rice. Rice is really easy. You just have to be very careful not to burn it. Um, and so that's why it's really important to follow the directions and not use super high heat. Some people um, I, that I personally know, they, they only know uh, one, one side of the heat on, on the stove and that's high. And if you cook everything on high, you're just going to destroy whatever it is that you're cooking. Bacon is the same way. A lot of people ask, you know, how to make bacon. Uh, bacon, you tend to use more of a medium, uh, medium heat. Uh, you can do medium high, just a smidgen, like just, just slightly over the medium and it comes out beautiful all the time. So it's really nice. All right. Now that and everything is all about smell. So, okay. Now that smells really good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and now add the chicken very carefully because this will splatter. So please be very careful when you are, are doing this. So just do it away from you. <laughs> kind of like the way that I'm doing here and you'll be just fine. Oh my gosh, that smells so delicious. Mm. And just for your information, it will still have a little bit of a fishy smell at first, so you're fine. Um, uh, it will, everything will kind of subdue itself once they're, all the ingredients are together, okay? So now look at how that's coating that chicken. Isn't that beautiful? It's just nice and slow. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add in the quarter cup of um, bamboo shoots. So here's our bamboo shoots. Um, when you open the can, um, you can strain it. See, there's still a little water in there, but you can strain it by that into the kitchen sink. Um, so just kind of go like that and tip it over for those that don't know how to do that. So I believe that's what we're doing this for is to help people learn to cook. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quarter cup and we are going to fill the quarter cup of bamboo shoots. Again, I mean, I don't, in my kitchen, <laughs> I don't really go by a lot of, I mean, I will measure, but honestly, I, I throw in some extras. So some of these ingredients, they don't have to be exact. So you can kind of make it the way you want to. <laughs> I know Renee, I am so ready to eat too. And it's okay if you use boil, uh, uh, the boil in the bags, they are super easy. So, but this is just for those people who want to learn to cook rice. Uh, this is how you do it, okay? And I like to add a little more bamboo shoots to my, my food, so. The next thing that we are going to add after we do a nice little swirl here, a little stir. Oh my goodness, this is like crazy awesome. Okay, so I'm getting all excited now, you guys. Peas. 
So now the peas, we'll do a half a cup of peas. So we just kind of go ahead and pour those in there into the half cup measuring cup. And again, if it's over the top, it's fine. I always add a little bit more anyway, but so you have nice little sweet peas. They're so yummy. I'm just adding in, like I said, I'm just gonna add a little bit more in here of the frozen peas, just because I happen to like them. And just to let you guys know, you don't have to have all of these ingredients in here. I'm gonna turn up the heat just a smidgen just to get, because these are frozen. Um, you don't have to have all this. If you don't like bamboo shoots, don't put them in there. If you don't like peas, don't put them in there. Um, I think the peas add a nice touch. It gives it a little bit of a color. Um, and they're delicious. So, but if you don't like them, don't put them in. So again, it's all about your preference. So, but this, I'm gonna tell you right now, is so yummy. Uh, again, all of the ingredients that I had uh, put in here, um, if, I, if you have to buy all of it, um, it's about 35 bucks. Um, but a lot of the stuff you have in your cabinets anyway, or in your freezer, um, and so it's real easy. And as you can see, it's 450 right now, and this is done. So we're just gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to, um, and then we just basically put the rice onto a plate, and I'll show you how we do that. Um, and then we ladle the um, mixture on top of the rice. And usually I do about a half a cup of rice to one, one and a half ladles of, of, of this mixture, this chicken mixture. Um, and it is so good and it does feed a family of four. I had, I have um, all guys in my house, so they're all big eaters, or they were, because so now I'm an empty nester, but um, they were all big eaters and it fed everybody. Um, the one only complaint that I had was uh, that they couldn't go back for more. So so if you have, uh, they were satisfied, but it, it is addicting. It is a very addictive dish um, the, as far as the flavors and everything go. So um, so if you have people that kind of eat more than they should, then you're probably going to need to, <laughs> probably going to need to make an extra. So I find that a, how a pound and a half of a chicken, um, I find about a pound and a half of the chicken actually is uh, uh, is ideal. So let's get you up here for a second so I can see everybody. See, make sure I got everybody's questions answered. So, because then as soon as this is done here, I'm going to show you how to plate it. So, okay. So I'm going to go wash my hands again. Okay. Okay. So, so far, um, we are at 4:53. The food is done, um, and I'm pretty excited about it because I'm getting ready to eat, and I hope you guys are too. Um, so, do, does anyone have any questions whatsoever? So, I think I. I think I got every question so far. So just let me know if you have any other questions. Um, and let me know if you liked this um, cooking class, if it kind of helped out or anything. Next week, I'm going to be, ma be making another family favorite. Um, I can't remember where I got the recipe. I wanna kind of say it's probably a craft recipe, um, but it also is one of my family's favorites. And that is the uh, zesty, uh, zesty sausage with penne. Um, if you like sausage, you are going to absolutely love this recipe. Um, I can honestly tell you it's another recipe that is like cracked in this household. <laughs> so, but it is so good. Um, so we have here, next 
week we will be using um, the Jimmy Dean Italian sausage for it. So, um, or you can also use the um, Johnsonville sausages and just hit remove the casings. I've used those too, the, um, the mild Italian sausage, super awesome. But if you want less of a mess, we're gonna be using this. You're going to be needing 12 ounces of penne pasta. You're also gonna need four ounces of the Philly, uh, Philly um, Philadelphia cream cheese um, or any cream cheese that, that you happen to like. Um, you're gonna need a red bell pepper and a green bell pepper. Um, and I think that's about it, but I will post the recipe here soon so that we can um, make sure that everybody has what they need for next Wednesday's um, cooking class. And this is perfect, this is so perfect. So I'm getting ready to show you how to go ahead and plate this, okay? Okay, so let's move on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. So, what we're going to do, um, and this is going to seem silly, but I like to take my my uh, measuring cup, get that pee out of there, and I actually fill the uh, fill the this measuring cup up. Sometimes I use a bowl. Sometimes I use the measuring cup. It really just depends on whatever you've got. Uh, you don't have to do this. This is just me. I'm just kind of goofy that way. And I just kind of put that right there to the side, right in the middle. See right there? If you guys can see it, I know it's kind of getting, see? All right, next, I'm going to take the ladle. And I have already turned the heat off of this mixture. I'm going to go ahead and put my Now this actually, this recipe does not really take this long. It's only because I'm trying to show you guys how to do everything. Um, take the ladle and then make a nice stir. Put that down so I'm not getting dangerous with myself here. So take that ladle and then I just pour it right on over the rice. Now, you don't have to, um, you don't have to use just one ladle. You can use more than one ladle um, if you want more sauce or more chicken or whatever. Um, but this actually for the rice to the ratio is actually really delicious. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you guys, I cannot wait to dive in. So anybody have any questions? Isn't it beautiful? This is the green curry chicken with jasmine rice. And there you have it. So if you like this cooking class, please uh, leave a comment. Let me know how uh, you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, we do also have uh, some uh, other cooking classes, but those are paid cooking classes. We, if you're interested in other cooking classes, these are just really super quick and easy recipes, but we do have other, other things like making your own Caesar salad dressing, um, homemade from scratch, because I do a lot of uh, scratch made um, foods. Um, these are just really recipes that, that you have that you can make pretty quickly with some of the stuff in, in your household already. So, um, but anyway, if you have any questions, please, oh, thank you so much, Renee. It, and um, if, please let me know uh, if there's anything that you guys need. Uh, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you again next Wednesday for our zesty uh, sausage with penne. Um, you're really gonna love those, especially if you love bell peppers and sausage and pasta. Um, you're, oh, that's the other thing too. You are also going to need, um, a spaghetti sauce or a pasta sauce and we happen to like to use I'll show you real quick um, okay so get to it. All right. you can use either one of these you can either use one of these with the garlic or you can use Michael's so one of those two or whatever pasta sauce that you guys like but um this is definitely awesome stuff so anyway all right you guys well i'm gonna go eat i hope that you guys are too so if you need anything else see you next wednesday bye guys